Testing, testing, testing. Good, they both work. Good, testing. Thank you. For the skit, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, but I guess you know. Yeah, that's it. As long as you guys sing loud, because you lead singers, then they won't be ashamed to like try. Just sing super loud. Bree, you guys need to sing like super loud. Oh, yeah. Tristan needs it. Just stand by me. I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? Or something, something, something. For what? Part one. By Eminem, there's one, huh? Yeah, those are super good. Both of them. They have like Rihanna, don't they? Which one has Rihanna? She was gonna be in it. Who's that? I've never even seen her like in real life. So what are you waiting for? Yeah. Did you stop? <laughs> <laughs> never so seen sorry. her. I don't like even keep up with music anymore. All I listen to is Taylor. Yeah. I heard Victor. What's that? Praise music? You ready?
Good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, welcome to the third night of our revival series. I hope you've all been blessed. And I know tonight you will all be blessed as well. Okay. May you bow your heads with me as we start off with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for us being able to be here again, Father God. And I just pray that tonight that all these people will be blessed, that I may be blessed. And the speakers, please be with them, Lord. And I just pray that the whole thing may um, just be a true blessing, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please stand and join us for song service. Tonight's first song is How Deep the Father's Love.
Bear heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Uh, thank you for letting us all get here safely. Uh, I just want to lift up the speakers to you. Um, uh, give them the. Disregarding the score. And once it was broken and spilled out, a fragrance filled. Spirit set free from 
The Creation by James Weldon Johnson, adapted for Reader's Theater by Kathy Jones. And God stepped out on space. And looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. And far as God could see, darkness covered everything. Darker than a hundred midnights. Down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled. And the darkness told him, on one side. And the light stood shining. On the other. That's good. Then God reached out. And took the light in his hand. And God rolled the light. In his hand, until he made the sun. And he set that sun. A blazing in the heavens. And the light. That was left. From making the sun. God gathered it up. In a shining ball. And flung it against. The darkness. Spangling the night. With the moon and stars. And down between, the darkness and the light. He hurled the world. And God said, That's good. Then God himself. Stepped down. And the sun was on his right hand. And the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered. About his head. And the earth was under his feet. And God walked on the sea. Where he trod. His footsteps hollowed the valleys out and pulled the mountains up. Then he stopped. And looked. And saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world. And he spat out seven seas. He bathed his eyes. And the lightnings flashed. He clapped his hands. And the thunders rolled. And the waters of the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted and the little red flowers blossomed the pine trees pointed his finger at the sky and the oak tree spread out his arms the lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground and the rivers down to the sea and God smiled again and the rainbow appeared 
curled itself around his shoulder. Then God raised his arm and he gave the command over the sea and the land. And he said, Bring, bring forth, forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could, brought his hand. Fishes and fowls, and beasts and birds, swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, That's, That's good. good. And God walked around. And God looked around. At all that he had made. He looked at his sun. And he looked at his moon. He looked at his little stars. He looked at his world with. And God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think by a deep, wide river. He sat down with his head in his hand. God thought and thought till he thought I'll make you a man. Out from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay and by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there, the great God Almighty who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the far corner, of the night, who rounded the earth. This great God, like a mammy, bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, twilling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it, he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen, amen. amen. Hello? Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm glad that me and Alex are back speaking again this year. I hope that you are truly blessed by what we have to say about creation, our purpose, and how God picked out a life that we should all live. I hope that after this sermon, you grow closer to your creator and are willing to step out of this gym with a newfound purpose and a fire in your hearts to share God's word with others. Five minutes till three, every boy in the seventh grade classroom looked anxiously at the clock, waiting as every minute ticked down. Especially Benny, because you see, today, Benny was gonna do something great. And as every boy looked at that clock, it went from four minutes till, to three minutes till, to two minutes till, until finally the school bell rang. And every boy dashed out of that seventh grade classroom, headed to the baseball field. Except Benny. You see, Benny was a little slow. He wasn't as athletic as the other boys. And so it took Benny a while to get out to the diamond. And by the time he did, the teams had already been chosen and the game had already gotten underway. And so Benny begged and begged the other boys if he could just get out in right field and where no one hit, just to be a part of the game. But they said no. And so Benny went um, to, to the field next, next to the one that the boys were playing at. And he wanted to practice on his hitting. You see, because Benny wanted to get good enough to where he could play with the other boys. And so Benny, with his back turned to the other boys, threw the ball in the air, swung, strike one. Benny could hear the boys behind him snickering and, and laughing. But this didn't, this didn't, um, this didn't, you know, Benny, Benny still kept going through. So Benny, with the ball, threw it back in the air. Strike two, missed. Now he could hear boys behind him start laughing. And so Benny, knowing that it was time to clutch up, knowing that he had to hit that ball over the fence, knew what, what was about to happen. And so he threw that ball in the air, swung, strike three. Now the boys were laughing at Benny, and Benny picked up the bat, picked up the ball, and headed home. Tears nearly rolling down his face from, from not being able to impress his other boys. Tears of embarrassment. And it was about halfway home that Benny realized that, yeah, he wasn't the greatest hitter out there. But those tears of sorrow turned into tears of joy. Because, you see, Benny knew that he couldn't hit that ball, but he knew that he was the best pitcher ever. Because he struck himself out. Yeah. 
You see, we all have a purpose, and maybe our purpose isn't to drive that ball past, past the fence and outfield. Maybe our ball is to be a pitcher. Our goal is to be a pitcher. If you would pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you come and be with us tonight as we get into the topic of why you created us, Lord, um, and, and how we could serve you and what that means to be created by you, God. I ask that you please be with Ashley and I as we present this and represent you. In your name, amen. All right. So let's get into this creation. So tonight we're going to focus mainly on what our purpose is of being created and what God's goal in creating us was. So, if there's no God, then what's your purpose? What's the point of, of you existing? You see, if there was no God, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd probably be off doing some stupid stunt, live my 80 years, and then I'd just die. But if there is a God, which I believe there is, then what's your purpose? And that's what we're going to get into later tonight. So let's talk goals. Human goals versus God goals. So for human goals, um, it's not really that hard to, to figure out what human goals are. All you, have to go on, all you have to do is just go onto Twitter or Instagram, type in hashtag goals. Pretty simple. So let's look at some of those right now. I mean, that brand new BMW. I don't know about you, but that's, that's a personal goal of mine. Uh, that looks pretty nice, although I'm thinking more of like a, a Bugatti. I think that would look a lot better. Another goal, um, having that relationship, finding someone special, uh, that's something I want. Well, I mean, no, it's maybe like in 10 years it's something I want. Uh, not, not saying that I want a relationship, although, ladies, uh, winter formal is about a month away. So uh, just remember, I'm available. All right. Another goal, fashion. Fashion's a huge goal right now, trending. Everyone wants to look nice and dress nice. And of course, technology, having that latest product going out there. Uh, you know, maybe you're not content with having the iPhone 6 and instead you want that iPhone 6S. So let's get into God's goal in creating us. Uh, you could turn with me to Isaiah 43, 1 to 7, or you could look it up on the board. And then I'll, I'll be reading that. So verse 1, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who informed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. And when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. And you, when you walk through fires of oppression, you will not burn up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for... I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Sheba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from the east and west. I will say to the north and south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God for I have made them for I've made them for my glory. It was I who created them. All right, so let's analyze this a little more. The main point of this passage, the main point of this passage being, don't be afraid. Oh, we can see it plainly put in verse 1. And then verses 1 to 4 list reasons why we shouldn't be afraid. Uh, God talking about when we're in deep waters, he'll be with us. When we're in rivers of difficulty, we won't drown. And fires of repression, we won't be burned up. And then verse 5 restates what verse 1 already says. Don't fear. I am with you. And we could see those in verses 5 to 7. So what's God's goal? Well, if you look in the last verse, verse 7, and if you'd read this with me. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. So here we could see what God's, God's goal in creation was. Specifically us as Christians was to glory him, uh, glorify him. And this is obviously talking about Israel. Uh, Christianity was still a couple thousand years to come. So let's talk about 
Israel's history and then how this, how through Israel's history it could be related to us. So let's think of the history of Israel as, as a birth. And like any birth, you have to start off with uh, a conception. So if you want to think of a conception, you can think of Abraham. When God came to Abraham and, and talked to him and said, you'll be the father of many nations. And then the next phase is the gestation period or the slavery in Egypt, where over the hundreds of years that they were there, um, the nation didn't really form together. It was just waiting, followed by the birth or the, ex uh, the exodus of Egypt, I'm supposed to say Egypt, where the nation was born. But like any baby, it got lost, and for 40 years, it wasn't actually put together. So we could think of these three steps process um, kind of like a, a new Christian. If you want to think of a conception, it's kind of like, like, um, like that first time being exposed to God. Maybe there's someone in here tonight who's never really heard of God before, and then you'd be like in this stage, hopefully leading to the next stage, the gestation period, or getting to know God more over time gradually, getting to know him personally and starting to develop that relationship, followed by that birth, which is a new Christian being born. And so we know that, that this passage that I read previous applies, more, applies to, to us too as present-day Christians. If you look in 1 Corinthians uh, 10.31, it says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, obviously, uh, Corinth wasn't in Israel. So we know that God was, or Paul writing this, was talking more, was talking to Gentiles also. So in this, we can see that our job is to glorify God. And so... It doesn't matter who you are as long as you glorify God. And God loves everyone. Amen? Amen. All right. God loves uh, men. Amen? And then God loves women also. Amen? Right. God loves that little baby sitting in the pews throwing crackers all over the place. Amen? And then that old lady in the back of church who won't let you go by. He loves her too also. Right? Amen. God loves us all. Uh, no matter who we are what race we are, uh, or our past. So imagine if we had all just put our dis differences aside and glorify God. Imagine, instead of us arguing over, over uh, controversial issues, and instead of putting all that energy into, into fighting, we put that into glorifying God and sharing what he shared with us. Imagine instead of all of us bickering at each other, we would go out and get new souls for God. And you see, I think we see that way too much in the church. I remember I was in Sabbath school um, a long time ago. I was in juniors, and there was a boy in the youth program. And in youth, for their worship service, they play music. And they had a trap set in the youth room, and so he would play drums in there. He was probably around 12 or so. And so a couple families who were, who were more conservative uh, thought that this shouldn't be allowed, that you shouldn't have drums in church period, whether it be during the main service or whether it be uh, during Sabbath school. And so a couple of these families went and talked to, to this 13, 12-year-old boy and said, you can't have drums in church. Uh, that was about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and I've never seen that guy back in church because of those two families. Imagine if instead of tearing each other down, we'd build each other up to glorify God. Instead of tearing each other down, we'd build each other up. Remember why we were created, to glorify God. And so now I'd like to invite Ashley to come up as she, uh, as she talks about our purpose.
Genesis 1, 26 through 28, and you can follow along on the screen. And God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful. Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the earth, yeah, and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. From the very beginning, God has put us in high authority. He has made us dominion over the seas, land, and sky. He saw potential for greatness from the very beginning. Let's take a look at the first part of verse 28. Then God blessed them. We have been blessed and under the care of God since the very start of our existence. We have been, oh. We may see blessings as shoes of phone or friends, but God's blessings are more deep and profound. He blesses us through the peace he gives us at our darkest hour, the joy that comes from giving, and the satisfaction of living a life in him. As little kids, we are constantly asked, what do you want to be when you're older? You're going to be a doctor or a lawyer. These words and thoughts go through our mind numerous times. We ask ourselves if we are smart enough to be doctors or lawyers or run a, run a top-of-the-line business. I'm here to tell you that there is something you've been called to do that is greater than the worldly status quo of this world. We have a purpose that has been given to us that some of us have yet to discover. While we are on this earth, we should excel in the places that God has given to us. But there is a greater purpose, a job far more rewarding than the paycheck that we get now and the material things you may acquire. A job that pays better than the, because you are not getting paid in money, but through the joy that comes from being a fisher of men. Mark 1.17, then Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. We think that we can't have a purpose, but so often forget about Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. We are loved human beings who God created in his own image, that we should not only walk in them, but dwell in them and bask in the abounding love that God has so graciously given to us. Last year around this time, I picked being a revival speaker, but soon after I checkmarked that box, I started to doubt if I had done the right thing. I was going to be an instrument that Jesus would use to bring people to Christ. How could I actually do that? I have sinned against God, I haven't always followed his ways, and I've sometimes neglected him, but yet he chose me. One of the amazing things about being a Christian is that when you are feeling down and out about yourself, he uses a revival series or the person you've been praying for coming to you and saying that they want to give their life to Jesus to boost your spirits. People who are seen to be the worst of sinners, the sickest, and the weakest are who God uses to be a light and a tool for his higher work. He stands at the door of our hearts and knocks. He waits patiently for us to come around, for us to see we are made flawless in him. Purpose. The word, the reason in which something is done or created or for which something exists. That, re that reason may seem a little bland, so I look for our purpose in the Bible, and it was purely refreshing. We have had so much thought put into us and our existence. The reason in which we are made is an act of love and adoration. We are truly beautiful works of art, daughters and sons of a heavenly Father. 1 Thessalonians 15.58 Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in Jesus. Our goal is to bring others to Christ, for his love to be shown to all around the world. We may not get instant gratification, and the road may be long, but the work of the Lord is the only job that offers eternal life as a reward for all our troubles that we have endured while living on this earth. As long as we are in this world, we are going to be sinners. We will make mistakes, and we will fall short. The one thing about God is that he knows we are sinners, and he makes a way for us to be brand new every day. His mercies are new every morning, and his love stronger than ever. He has imparted the strength to get through the day, and has made a way for us to not only make it to heaven, but to bring others with us. Matthew 28, 19-20 I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. This verse is very powerful yet scary at the same time. 
How, how do I make disciples of all nations? I don't have the money to go on mission trips or the time to go pass out glow. The beautiful thing about having God in your heart is that he doesn't just use people who donate or give out glow. He uses a smile that you give someone in the grocery market, the giving of a dollar to a homeless person. The small things that we may see, think are insignificant are what God counts as huge to other people. If God dwells in us, there will, we will be constant lights to the people around us. As all human beings, we worry a lot. We worry about finances, job stability, grades, and more. We become overwhelmed with everyday life that we could surely not add on the weight of witnessing to people. But God combats all that worry with a verse that we can go to when we are unsure about that surgery on Friday or where to go to college. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication with, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God with the peace of God will surpass all understanding. We will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. When we put our faith in God, we are giving up our comfort. But God has created us in that we've, if we have a pliable spirit, he will make peace and joy in everyday occurrence. With God, even the bad days have a blessing in them. So as we go and witness to others, we should not worry about what may happen, where the finances will come from, or any other doubts. For if God will take care of the birds of the air and clothe the lilies of the field, then he will clothe and take care of us, for we are his children. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. God will never leave you. You are under his constant protection. He wants to instill a fire in your hearts to witness and plant a seed for Christ. I hope that you learn... I hope that you let him use you for your greater purpose and see where he takes you. Maybe it's on a mission trip, leaving glow in your doctor's office, or simply smiling at someone who looks like they are down. Whatever it may be, know that God is wanting to use you to reach the people of Clovis and beyond. You are wonderfully and beautifully created. I love stories. I love to, to hear stories and to tell stories. And um, maybe that's why I like history so much, because I view it as just one story altogether. And if your dad's a history major, of course, it's always story time. So I want to share one more story before we end tonight. And Ashley comes up and wraps things up. Dave was starting uh, freshman year of high school. Not really nervous but cool and collected as he entered the ginormous school. And the first month or two went all right, but um, he found out that his, his older brother was getting bullied by this, this beast of a senior. You know, we're talking like six foot five, 280 pounds, grew a beard in a day, like no shave November. Yeah, that was like him in a day. So, so anyway, Dave found out that, uh, that this is going, has been going on for a while. And so he wanted to do something about it. He wanted to stop this bully. And so Dave, Dave made a couple friends, and he was talking to a friend named Paul. And Paul said, well, Dave, you know, if, if you want me, I could help you. I could train you, and then you could fight this bully for your older brother. Uh, Dave wasn't completely on board with the idea, but uh, he agreed. And so Paul would work out with Dave, and they did a session together, but uh, Dave just said that it wasn't working, and he would just ask God for, for his help in taking on this bully. And so one day, as the bully has his older brother pinned up against the locker, Dave makes a quick prayer, walks up to the bully, and slugs him in the face. The bully falls down. All the high school girls, you know, they come rushing out, and they're, they're praising Dave for what he's done, taking out this bully. And Dave said, no, no, this wasn't me. This was for God. Now, this story makes a lot more sense if you uh, put it back into context. We're talking about David and Goliath here over two, uh, 2,000 years ago. You see, David had a purpose, and that was to take out Goliath. We all have a purpose. Now all we have to do is just find out what that purpose is 
and glorify God with it. And so I'd like to invite Ashley back up here as she, uh, she closes us out. I was given a book a couple of days ago that challenged me and made me rethink a lot of things. It's called Going All In by Mark Batterson. i like to read you a couple of lines. There comes a moment when you throw caution to the wind. There comes a moment when you need to go all in. There comes a moment when you need to burn ships. This is that moment. This is your moment. It's all or nothing, now or never. If you want to go all in for Christ, you have felt God knocking at your heart, asking you to come live a life fully devoted to him. You want to give up the pain that comes from living in this world for the joy that can only come from God, then I ask that you stand. Let's close with prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for an amazing outcome. I pray over each and every one of these special individuals. We are all standing for the same reason. We want to dedicate our lives to you. We are all going through something in our lives right now, something that hurts and may be the reason we aren't close to you. Help us to know that the pains and worries of this world are temporary. I ask that you give us the strength and courage to get through the days and help us know that even though we fail on a daily basis, your love and forgiveness are new every morning. We are made perfect in you. You created us with a set purpose in our lives to share your word and be the best we can be. It may be tough at times, but help us to not forget that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I pray that we can bring people to you through your words, through our words and actions. Thank you for your comforting and inspiring words. Help everybody to get home safe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys are dismissed. <laughs>